Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we have some Bevy entries for the 2024 GMTK Game Jam, an inverse kinematic spider and asset-driven shaders, in addition to much more. There are a number of different conversations happening at any given time, and this week is no different, seeing some interesting WGSL thoughts and experiments in progress, as well as more conversations around fixed time step usage. There was also some great conversations this week in Engine Dev in the Discord channel. That's in the Bevy official Discord if you aren't familiar with it yet. These conversations were around Bevy's target audience, feature set, RFC, and working group processes, and more. And first up for PRs this week, we've got new utility methods on Infinite Plane 3D. If you know you have points on an Infinite Plane 3D, you can choose to work with that in 2D instead of 3D because it's a plane. And sometimes this is even preferable depending on the algorithm you want to use. 14651 introduces a set of utility methods to project 3D points on a plane to 2D points and then inject them back into 3D after you're done processing them. This includes functions like sign distance, project point, and a number for isometries. And next up in the ongoing community conversation around fixed time steps, it came up that there was no clear schedule to update a camera's transform when using a fixed time step. This is conceptually related to ordering data changes in relation to functionality like physics. In a frame, sometimes you want the physics systems to read data you've written, and sometimes you want to react to updates those physics systems have written. The physics systems in this example would be running inside of the fixed time step schedules. And the problem is well described in 14873. In 14881, a new system set is introduced called run fixed main loop system. This creates a more supported way to run logic once per frame like update and before or after the fixed update logic like the physics system. The documentation included this one is a great read if you're looking for additional context. So if you think this applies to you, definitely go read it and check it out. And there are a number of interesting efforts around WGSL happening, including better tooling and a general desire to have a better future experience. This is being examined from three different angles at least, the WGSL angle, the NANU angle, and the Bevy angle. None of these efforts have working groups at the moment, but they spurred a GitHub discussion called Some Thoughts on Bevy WGSL, in which CART makes some assertions and talks a little bit about what a WGSL future should look like. This includes things like a general lack of extending WGSL examples in the current field, as well as some opinions for what that should look like moving forward. It's an interesting post if you're interested in working on future WGSL extensions, but if you're only a Bevy user, you can probably skip this one. And finally, the Contributing Guide Collective Working Group has shipped new documentation on the website for onboarding new contributors. This includes a whole bunch of helpful information for getting oriented inside of the Bevy project. So if you've been holding off getting involved because you're not sure where to start, this is a great place to start. And of course, Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. This is a thread that roughly happens every week and is always a good read. And we're kicking off the showcase this week with an avian and csg character controller this is a character controller with avian physics and a csg crate we saw in last week's issue there's more to come for this project so look forward to that in the future and speaking of wgsl work this is asset driven reflection based shaders the source of the shader and javascript asset are both displayed on the screen the javascript file contains a single function shader update that is called each frame with a supplied variable shader printing the JavaScript object's keys to the terminal output. This value is built by introspecting the shader's IR via reflection and building an object that is supplied to the JavaScript runtime. Edits to the shader produce a new layout, which is dynamically applied to the material pipeline, creating new bindings on demand. Towards the end of the video, you can see introducing a new value on the JavaScript side that is instantly applied once the uniform is defined in the shader. This is really interesting work, and I'm super excited to see this progress in the future. More interesting work is this inverse kinematic-based spider. This spider is an inverse kinematic system crafted from scratch. Inverse kinematics is the act of determining where the joints should be to achieve a desired end position. And if you watch long enough, you can see this spider crawl around on just about every surface. While the inverse kinematics you saw for the spider were custom coded, if you're looking to get into this yourself, one of the crates that was suggested in the Discord thread was K, which I'm showing you here. Next up, we've got an 8v8 or 8-player free-for-all multiplayer RTS or real-time strategy game using Bevy. This uses Bevy Water, Bevy Quill, and Bevy Quinette. 
The terrain is randomly generated mesh and colors are added afterwards using WGSL shaders. Assets are made using Blender, and for now, they're just placeholders. Architect of Ruin got a great new menu. Architect of Ruin is a sword and sorcery colony survival game centered on the reconstruction of an ancient ruined temple. You can see more about Architect of Ruin at deadmoney.gg. And next we've got the making of a roguelike game. This is the first time-lapse video covering the development of a new roguelike game, which you can see at the very, very, very beginning, as well as being significantly more completed. These are customizable sliders built with a submerged UI toolkit. And this is the first of two updates this week for a generic prop pickup plugin. This generic prop pickup plugin is built using avian physics and got a nice catch simulator built in it later this week. And NetRise is a game available on itch.io where you work as a data center manager and you have to purchase, connect, maintain servers and process traffic to earn money and survive a catastrophic event at the end. Skyscale is a retro tower defense game made in Bevy for the GMTK Game Jam. This is the author's first Bevy project. In the game, you can build higher as you see more and more UFOs show up. And if the blocks take enough damage, they can knock you down as well. And from defending towers to defending planets, Scalar Defender is a planet defending game also submitted to the GMTK Game Jam. And next up, we've got Core Mine, which is a Bevy 0.14 voxel game that was originally written as a CTF challenge, which got its own write up and was included last week. You can find Core Mine at Crusaders of Rust slash Core Mine. While this tooling enables drawing polygons on a 2D grid, which then get extruded upwards into a 3D mesh at the specified height. The 3D meshes are also save loadable, and this functionality is powered by Bevy clay tiles. Speaking of world building, this is Gothic 2, which is an action RPG from 2002, which had its world imported into Bevy. There's some discussion of KTX2 and other kinds of optimizations in the thread, and this map consists of 1,200,000 vertices, 332 materials, 190,000 vertice collider mesh with Rapier 3D and very little optimization. Next up, this media manager app with tagging, searching, and browsing currently uses eGUI for the UI, but has an eye towards a re-implementation in the future. And this is Wild Spikes. Wild Spikes keeps on rolling. With now camera collision, the ability for Iggy, the main character, to roll, bloom effects, and HDR, a day and night cycle, and an inventory system. And finally, in our showcases, we've got eGUI retained widget trees. This is using a branch of Bevy, which this demo added retained widgets to eGUI. The work was driven by a need for a UI framework with text editing support, which eGUI provides. And the full sample code is available. And with that, we've made it into our crates for the week, starting off with Bevy Scene Post Process 0.1, their first release. This is a crate allowing you to post process your scenes before they're spawned which is similar to Bevy Scene Hook with one key difference. Bevy Scene Hook waits until after the scene is spawned to do its actions, while Bevy Scene Post Process does its actions at load time. This also means you can spawn your scenes synchronously rather than waiting on a scene bundle. And Bevy Material Tool saw a release this week. Bevy Material Tool uses materials stored in the GLTF file, as well as a second RON file to configure these materials. These materials can then be used to replace all of the standard materials attached to a mesh entity. And Pyre Tooltip got a release this week, which is fairly straightforward. It is a tooltip crate built on top of Bevy UI, as you can see here. And rounding out the crates this week, Bevy Observed Utility. Bevy Observed Utility is an ergonomic and correct utility AI powered by observers. Among its features, it boasts minimal boilerplate, a high level of expressivity, order correct scoring, Familiar design, as in it reuses the standard parent-child hierarchy, and pay-for-what-you-use performance. The crate can be used for real-time and turn-based game simulation. And finally, we've got two educational posts this week. The first is building a Bevy plugin for rolling dice. This is a post covering the author's adventure, making custom dice and rolling them in Bevy. And finally, we've got a video about using the Mesh 2D depth texture, which was just merged into the Bevy main branch. This is an introductory level video that is also being filed under a labs category. That means that this video is talking about features that are merged into the main branch, but haven't seen a release yet. And is thus meant for those who are looking to be a little bit more experimental. 
That's it for this week. As always, we've got all of the list of PRs that were merged this week, issues that were opened, and PRs that were opened and need review. So definitely go check those out if you're looking to get involved. And don't forget to check out the new contributing documentation. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one.